Hi, this is Russell Stunner from teachertrainingvideos.com. I've had loads of questions recently about how you screen share when working with Zoom. The sorts of questions that people are asking me are, Russell, my students don't seem to be able to screen share. Russell, my students can all screen share and I can't control the lesson. Russell, I can't screen share my PowerPoint, where is it? So I'm gonna go through everything about sharing your screen in Zoom, which is actually really the crucial part of uh, working with Zoom. I'm gonna show how you can either control it or you can pass control to your students if you want them to screen share. I'm gonna show you the settings that you need to think about. And I'm gonna show you some of the problems that you sometimes happen if you've got another program open on the screen, you don't need two monitors. I'm gonna take you through everything about screen sharing from A to Z. Really hope you like the video. If you do, please like it, please share it, please any comments, leave them below. And of course, if you're really interested in my work, come to teachertrainingvideos.com. There's a special section on Zoom with more videos about different Zoom uh, features that you might be interested in. And of course, if you really wanna follow my work, sign up to my newsletter and join me on my YouTube channel. Right, let's get going. When you come onto Zoom and you log in, it's a good idea in your general settings so that every time you create a meeting, you've already got your general settings set. You can override them, but it's a good idea if you come down into settings here on the left hand side, and then really what you're doing is you're working in the basic settings. So just click there to go to the basic settings. And if you scroll down, a just scroll down a little bit from the basic settings. So if I just come down here, you will see that you've got the option here, screen sharing. And what you can do here, and this is a good idea, is it's probably a good idea in most cases to allow both yourself and the participants to share. And you'll see in a minute when I explain how this is connected to the breakout room. But it's a good idea though to say who can start sharing when someone else is sharing, the host. So if you wanna kind of take control of a screen sharing situation, then at least if one of your students is screen sharing and you wanna take over, you can. If it's only you that's gonna be doing the screen sharing, and that may be the case if you're perhaps doing a webinar or just doing a very teacher-fronted lesson, then don't allow your students to screen share, okay? But I normally allow my participants to screen share as well as myself. If you set that, when you come into Zoom, that will be the setting. The good news is you can override that and I'm gonna show you how now. So I've set my general settings. I'm gonna come over up to here. I'm gonna schedule a meeting. It's gonna open up. I'm just gonna leave all of that. I'm not gonna do anything. It doesn't make any difference. I'm gonna click on save. That's my meeting scheduled and then I'm gonna click on start meeting straight away. And we're gonna come into the meeting. I'm gonna click on open Zoom couple of minutes and we'll come in. Now I'm gonna turn off the webcam because I'll be using the webcam in Zoom so I'll need to turn myself off the screen and we'll start to look at some of the options with screen sharing. Okay, so we're logged into Zoom. Obviously I've got my camera here. All right, I'll turn that off because it's way too big. <laughs> uh, come back here. First thing is I want you to look behind the screen. I'm gonna minimize. All right, so it kind of goes small. Notice I've got the PowerPoint slide open already. So I've got a PowerPoint slide in the background here. I'm gonna open it up. So I've got that open. Now I'm gonna open up Zoom again. And when I now click on screen share, there is the PowerPoint slide ready. I can click on it and click on share. The PowerPoint slide is open. I can now click onto the slide and move, use the arrow keys. Make sure you click onto the screen to activate the PowerPoint slide. You can now move forward and back through the pages. So you can easily share a PowerPoint slide in um, Zoom and you don't need two windows. Now what a lot of people get confused about is simply because they think to themselves, well, where's the PowerPoint slide? You don't need to do that. You've opened it up before. Now I'm gonna give you a little tip here, interestingly. If you scroll over here and you annotate, and I have pointed this out before, and if you annotate on the screen, okay, now, if you now click on the mouse, click on the PowerPoint, and then move forward, don't forget the annotations will still be there because the annotations are really on a kind of, it's basically a layer above the, the presentation. So the first thing you have to do is click on clear, clear, click all, clear the drawings, then move on, 
by clicking onto the screen and using the, because you have to tell uh, Zoom what is active. So as soon as you click on here, for example, let's do it again. So we click on drawer. Now the drawing tool is active. Okay, so if I draw, let's say, uh, onto the screen. Now the drawing tool is active. And of course, I can't move forward. It's just gonna draw for me. I need to click on the mouse, click on to PowerPoint, clean the drawing off, and then click on the forward key to move to the next page of the presentation. So that's how you work in, in a PowerPoint slide. So let's look at another example now about screen sharing video because some people are getting caught out with this as well so again I'm gonna minimize zoom so there it is just there minimize I'm in the background here and I've got a one of my own videos about working with zoom okay it's called key settings I've got the video ready on my computer already okay now I click on here to maximize again so I'm back into zoom now I'm gonna to come to screen share. Two things really important. First of all, find the video. So there it is. That's the video I wanna to play to my students, but I also wanna make sure they can hear it. So I need to click on that button as well. Click on share. And it's just, again, the same thing. Now you've got control. You is can that play the video. Before. And again, uh, let me just skip the advertisement one second. And the video is playing. I, and you can see, I'm, and the students will be able to hear the sound well, because the host I have is not shared necessarily the a good sound. idea. And let now, me you explain. might not realize this, but if you come up to the top here, I do believe if you click on a note, same thing again, you can actually even draw on the video. Okay? Because remember, everything is on a layer above the video. For me personally, the breakout rooms have got to be one of the best features in Zoom. I'm gonna do a special set of videos about the breakout room, but if you click on breakout rooms, I can explain this really clearly. You choose how many rooms you want, so you might say, I want five rooms. Let's imagine that you've got, it says, you've got 20 participants, how many rooms do you wanna put them into? Five, that will be four in each room. You click on automatically, and what will happen is automatically, your 20 students will be divided into five different breakout rooms. You'll see them all listed, all super clear, and then you click on go to breakout rooms and everything starts, okay? And then you'll see a list of all the breakout rooms. You'll see the students are in there. You'll suddenly be on your own, but you'll also notice that you can join any of the breakout rooms. Now, if the students are in a breakout room, so let's imagine they're in a breakout room now. If they can't share their screen, then really they're limited to having talking and maybe obviously if they're on their webcams then they're talking to each other. But they can't look at anything on the screen because they're in a breakout room and none of them can share. So it's absolutely vital that if you're gonna put your students in a breakout room that you allow them to screen share so they can move into the breakout room and they can open up any content onto the screen that they want to share. Okay, just to go through that again, really clear, you click on the breakout rooms, you choose how many breakout rooms you want, not easiest is to do it automatically, it will tell you here, assign, for example, 20 participants into five rooms, that means there'll be four in each room, everything's automatic, click on create rooms, and then click on go to breakout rooms, and it will all start automatically, your students will be in breakout rooms. Now, if you haven't allowed them to screen share, they won't be able to do very much apart from chat together. That really is all they'll be able to do because there's nothing that they can share on the screen. So the key thing is if you put your students into breakout rooms, make sure that you allow them to screen share, make sure that you've taught them how to screen share, and that way they can be sharing a PowerPoint slide in groups of four or five or talking about a picture or going through a document or whatever you decide to do. So what I think a lot of people are getting confused with is the fact that what I always do is minimize Zoom. Get on with getting my page ready, whether it's a image or whether it's a video or whether it's a PowerPoint slide, and then I come back over again, maximize Zoom, and then I do the screen share. Now what about students? Well, in this case, you've set it that your students can screen share, so your students can do exactly the same as you. They can open up anything that's on their screen, and then of course they can talk about it if they've got audio rights as well, if you've allowed them to. So in theory, any student could do a presentation. They could 
play their PowerPoint slide and they can talk about their PowerPoint slide. All you've got to make sure is that in the settings and go to advanced settings, you've who can share all participants. That's all you need to then therefore meaning me, that means that all students can share. However, what you definitely want is that only the host can overwrite when someone's screen sharing. Otherwise, what you can have is all the students trying to open up screen shares at the same time. Now, one super important thing about the breakout rooms, and let me explain it. One thing is that you can be really imaginative with your screen shares. Uh, sometimes it's very difficult in a Zoom lesson to make things engaging. It's great to know about interesting websites that, that can bring things to life. I'm just gonna give you a really typical example of something I showed uh, in another video recently and I've been presenting to teachers as well. I'm gonna just click onto screen share and what I've done is I've got a website open called Google Earth. Google Earth is a great way of bringing the Earth to life for your students. You could take them off to visit a place that you've recently visited or where you've been on holiday or where you work or where you were born or anything. It's a really great tool. I'm just gonna click on it and just to demonstrate a really obvious example. Let's say, for example, I'm gonna show you Big Ben since I'm an Englishman and I could just zoom off to that particular place. You'll see it come onto the screen in a minute. Okay, it's gonna bring, bring me right down and it goes into this 3D view. Now this could be a lovely activity for you, for example, to get to describe a place and then tell the students around about all of the things that are around. If you click, it will stop moving. You can click here and it'll come into 2D view. If you click here, it will come into 3D view. And when it's in 3D view, it moves around. You could start to describe all of the things that were around here. So I could say, right, okay, this is Big Ben, and this is Westminster Bridge, this is uh, Westminster Pier, this is the Houses of Parliament, this is Parliament Square. I could then perhaps move around a little bit more and just say, right, okay, here we can see Westminster Abbey. Again, click into 3D, come around and highlight that. We've got these great views, so it can great be a really interesting. Now, same sort of thing, you're trying to bring a lesson to life. It could be a history lesson, perhaps even an architect lesson in architecture, or it could be a lesson in language learning, and you want the students to listen to your description. Lots of creative writing, all sorts of things that it could be based around. One thing my students are always amazed with when I do this, and I often do this when I'm showing places, that you can even drop down onto the road. You can come in really close by using these buttons here. But let's say I wanted to show them a historic monument. Uh, I'm just going to do a quick example. So I'm going to drop myself here. Okay, so right in front of the monument I want to visit. And what hopefully it's going to do is drop me down. And there we are. We've got the monument right in front of us there. King Richard I. Um, and uh, oh, this is the king that was, uh, um, who is always mentioned in um, the Robin Hood stories. Uh, hope that was useful. Hope you like uh, Google Earth as well. Great tool. Have a little look at it. It doesn't take much to, to learn and bring that into the class and make your lessons a lot of fun. Special section now on Zoom on my website on teachertrainingvideos.com so don't forget to visit that. And don't forget that Zoom is great for live lessons but how are you going to organise your students if you're working online with them? You need to be able to get them into classes and organise them so that you can share content and give them quizzes and activities to do and discussions etc. And so I'd really recommend that alongside Zoom you're working with Ed Model, that combination is the most powerful. Hope you like what I'm doing. If you do, please sign up to the newsletter, keep up with all the latest videos that I upload, blog posts that I write, webinars that I'm running, etc. And of course, follow me on my YouTube channel. And thank you very much.